we'll be going through a few questions on data sufficiency now. Data sufficiency, as the name suggests, involves a question which will have certain data which will be given to you. And it will be incomplete in the sense that there would be additional data that would be required to solve that question. Uh, this question statement will be followed by two statements, uh, named as statement 1 and 2 or statement A and B or so on. And then we have to figure out uh, if either of these statements are required or both these statements are required or uh, both these statements are together not sufficient to give, give answer to that question. So basically we have to just figure out if the data is sufficient or not. We do not really have to calculate. So one of the biggest mistakes that students make when they are dealing with these type of questions is that uh, they will end up calculating the entire thing and they will end up wasting a few seconds or minutes for that matter when they uh, when they are not really required to arrive at the answer. So it's very important to understand the question. Every question, almost every question will have a couple of scenarios at least that will be present and these statements which follow the question statement will help you to eliminate one of those two uh, one of those two or many of those options which you will get after you read this question so it's very important to figure out what these statements will look like or what these uh, various um, options will look like the various interpretations of the question would look like and after that maybe you can go about solving that question and probably see if uh, both the statements are required or not so ideally what we uh, advise uh, the students is that first you read the question you interpret the question just figure out what all scenarios are possible in your mind without calculating anything. If you can figure out at least a couple of scenarios, it means that you are good to go. If you are not able to find out another scenario for the question, then probably you have uh, done some mistake somewhere or probably you are not read the instructions carefully. So it's a good idea to just build a couple of scenarios in your head and then probably go through the statements and then you can uh, mark your answer depending on what you feel about the entire question. So let's look at a, the first question. Uh, so the direction says that, uh, the direction say that, each of these questions, uh, they consist of a statement and a question and or, or a question and there are two statements number 1 and 2. You have to decide whether the data provided in statements is sufficient to answer these questions or not. Uh, if you have to mark 1, if the data in statement 1 alone is sufficient, if the data in statement 2 alone are sufficient, if the data is in either of those two statements is sufficient, if data in both these statements is required and even if you combine the data from both these statements, even then you will not be able to answer that question. That is option 5. So we just have a look at the question. It, it's a simple question. Uh, generally these questions are uh, they, they are basically interpretations of extensions of whatever you are learned in quant or probably logical reasoning or data interpretation and you have to simply use those techniques only. The only thing that changes is the format of the question. You are not expected to find the answer but you are expected to uh, find out whether this information is sufficient or not. A lot of people make mistakes here again as I said that they calculate. So that is a strict no-no when it comes to these questions. Also, a few of a few of the, a few of the traps are laid such that the uh, few of the people will first read the first statement, then they will take into account that information also when they are dealing with the second statement. Doesn't really make sense. So you have to take each statement individually, and then probably if both of them are not really contributing, then probably you will uh, take both of them together, and then probably if, if it's not really uh, a good way to answer, probably it's not getting you an answer, then probably you will uh, mark five as your answer. Right? So you have to be careful when it comes to this uh, ordering of these options. Sometimes it might be the case that the first option might say that either or or the second option will say that only statement one, third option will say only statement two. So you have to be extremely careful when you are going through these uh, statements, these options. So let's see a few questions. Uh, there, are, there are three questions. I will be solving two of them. The third one you can try out uh, yourself. So the first question states that Rahul's rank is 19th in his class. So what is his rank from the last? So uh, the first of all, uh, so first of all, when you are dealing with this question, uh, as I have mentioned with almost every other question, it is very important to have a language of your own, a method of your own, a strategy of your own when you are dealing with a particular question. So in this case, Rahul's rank is 19 in his class. So I would say that there are a few people who are present here. Then there is Rahul, and then there are a few people who are after Rahul, right? So what is given in this data is that Rahul is 19 in his class. If Rahul is 19, then there are 18 people who are better than Rahul. So we will say that this is the descending order. So if 18 people are better than Rahul, then 18 people are here, then Rahul is present and then there are a few people who will be after Rahul or maybe they, will, they would have scored lesser than what Rahul has scored. So it would look something like this. Uh, we have to find out what is his rank from the last. So you have to find out how many people would be there in this. 
so either we would require the total number of students in the class or we would explicitly require the total number of people who are uh, who have uh, whom rahul has uh, probably beaten in that particular test or something so we would need, uh, need that bit of information we would need what what uh, what is what should be present in this question mark right so either it would, it would be the direct information that is given or it would be some other information which would lead us to this information so let's see what the first statement says the first statement says that kashish who ranks 18th in rahul's class is 52nd from the last now kashish ranks 18th in rahul's class so again i will represent it in the same manner so kash if kashish ranks 18th it means that kashish 17 people are present here after that kashish is there and then kashish uh, then there are few people who follow kashish right so kashish is 52nd from the last if someone is 52nd from the last it means that there are 51 people who are who have scored less than kashish or who are who like behind kashish so 17 kashish and 51 is what the entire construct is from this you can get the total number of students because 51 students are after Kashish, 17 students are before Kashish and Kashish is one such student so total number of students is 69. We need not even calculate uh, this data because we already know the total number of students and that was something that we wanted when we started with this statement. So we would definitely say that statement A will help us find the correct answer. So statement A is sufficient, Statement the first statement is sufficient. Now let's look at the second statement as well. So another thing that you have to be careful about, even if the first statement is uh, giving you the answer, it is not. It does not necessarily mean that the second statement is not sufficient. So you have to check for sec the second statement as well. If that is sufficient, then you will write either or as the option. If the first statement alone was proper, then you will write first option as the uh, as the correct answer. Okay. Uh, the second statement says that Monica's rank is 45th from last. So again, I will write the same thing. There are a few people who are uh, ahead of Monica. There are a few people who are behind Monica. So. If Monica is 45th from the last, so there are 44 people whose ranks are lesser than that of Monica's. So we know this part of it, but we do not know this part of it. Now if we do not know this part of it, we do not know at what position Monica is present, then probably we are not able to figure out the total number of students, which will not really lead us to this answer. So this is a very good trap which is being set here because a few of those people will carry forward the 69 to this thing. If you carry forward the 69 bit here, and if you say that 45 people here, so 24 people should be here, and Monica is ranked 25th from the left end, doesn't really make sense because you already considered 69 from the first statement. So you have to be very careful in this thing. So only statement 1 is uh, sufficient and so you will mark 1 as the answer to this question. So 1 is the answer to question number 1. So just be careful of the trap. The questions are very simple. The questions might look very simple and that, that is uh, extremely misleading when it comes to solving question papers. So even if it looks simple, you have to be very careful when you are solving. The second question says that Gina is a, a sister of Parul. How is Parul related to Gina? Now, Jina is the sister of Parul, so again you have to have a language of your own. So whenever someone says sisters, so I will simply write Jina here and Parul here. So the, this is something which I use for sisters or siblings for that matter. Now, if Jina is a sister of Parul, so Jina has to be a female because Jina is a sister of Parul. Now see that Parul, the gender of Parul is not given. So you have to find how is Parul related to Jina. So basically you have to figure out if Parul is a girl, is the name of a girl or a guy. Now, even if uh, even if it's obvious that Parul has to be a girl's name, it cannot be assumed in this con. It cannot be assumed in this context. Uh, it might be a short form, or it might be a nickname, or something like that. So you cannot be sure of the gender of Parul. So let's say for the moment that the gender of Parul is not known. We do not really know what the gender of Parul is. So let's see the first statement. The first statement states that Sargam is the mother of Parul. If Sargam is the mother of Parul, it means that. Sargam is one of the parents, so Sargam is the mother, so Sargam has to be a female. So Sargam female is the parent of Jina and Parul. This is the notation this is the notation of that entire version. So you have to have a language of your own, as I would be stressing in almost all my videos. So as soon as you write Jina, Parul and Sargam here, you have finished the first statement. But is the gender of Parul known? The gender of Parul is not known. So we will not really we cannot really determine what exactly uh, we cannot really determine if Parul is a male or female. Now let's go to the second statement. The second statement says that Parul is elder than Sam. Now Sam is a new entity which has appeared in this statement and Sam is previously not known. So we will simply say that Parul, Parul's age is greater than that of Sam's but then that again doesn't tell us the gender of Parul. So again this statement stand alone, it's not really helpful. So statement 1 is not helpful alone, statement 2 is not helpful alone. Even if we combine those two statements, we can simply say that uh, Parul is elder to Sam and Sargam is the mother of Parul and Jina is the sister of Parul but we do not really know if they are uh, if Parul is a male or female. So again we can safely say that even if you use both the statements even then you will not be able to arrive at the answer. So that is why uh, we will write 4 as the answer because this option 4 says that 
the data even in both statements 1 and 2 together are not sufficient to answer the question. So this is something that I will mark for this question. You can try out the third question on your own. Again, it's very important not to solve. It's very important to remember that you need not solve. So these questions are pretty straightforward. These questions are very simple. Uh, but in case you have some question which pertains to say geometry, if, if volume of a container is given and something from that container is, uh, the, the shape of the container is changed from say a cylinder to a sphere or something, you need not sit and calculate the volume of the cylinder, you need not sit and calculate the volume of the sphere. If you know the dimensions of these containers, then you should be good to go. And just keep in mind what information you need to know and what information uh, is provided and then you can uh, figure out how to move, uh, work around these questions. So data sufficiency is very easy, it's not very difficult when it comes to uh, entrance tests but then again you have to be very careful when you are solving it because a major trap lies in the options, the way in which they are constructed or the way in which um, they are arranged. So if you are very careful with these things then you should be able to get almost 100% of the marks in these questions. The questions are very easy and they are must attempt when it comes to uh, your entrance tests. Keep looking at our other videos as well. Thank you. Thank you.